Chelsea are not without their problems. They're of course without their wing backs and of course that Lukaku problem that has just, you know, uh, blown all over the headlines in the UK. But first, let's hear from Thomas Tuchel and his thoughts on that. Thomas, if I could begin by asking you please for your thoughts, whether you're disappointed, upset, angry, that Romelu has made his feelings of unhappiness so public. Yeah, we don't like it, of course, because uh, it brings it brings noise that we don't need and is not helpful. But uh, on the other side, we don't make want to make more out of it than it actually is. You know, you know very well how it is. It's uh, very easy to take lines out of context. It's very easy to to shorten lines, make headlines, and then later realize that it's not so bad and maybe not what he meant um, but let's be honest also with it we don't like it i don't like it like i said because it's noise that we don't need uh, we need a calm environment and focus and it does not help did he sit down with you to discuss his unhappiness at the role he's playing at the moment? no not at all I, I i don't feel him unhappy i feel i feel the exact opposite if you asked me yesterday morning i would say i feel the exact opposite and that's why it's a surprise, but I'm the wrong person to ask. This is the kind of thing that's best kept behind closed doors, is what you're saying? Sorry? This is the kind of thing that's best kept behind closed doors? If, 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 yeah, if there is something, it, it, it's, it's behind closed doors, uh, for sure. Chelsea fans will obviously feel that this was a big summer signing. He was returning home, supposedly, and now he's already giving an interview saying that he wants to go back to Inter. Like I said, I mean, this is what you read into it, what everybody reads into it. I did not read it completely. Like, it's very easy to, in general, it is very easy to take lines out of context and take lines happen to, uh, and, and make headlines to to get the focus and uh, um, to get the best out of these uh, interviews for several days. If it's an interview from a person of, of that kind of interest, that important player, I totally understand the process and that's why it's a lot of noise. It's not only a, a little bit of noise, it's, it's a lot of extra noise. But, um, but, but, but still we are like not here to just read the headlines and, and maybe we here can, can take the time uh, to, to, to try to understand what, what's going on because it does not reflect the, the, the daily work, it does not reflect the daily attitude, it does not reflect uh, um, the, the daily behavior which Romelu shows here at Cobham. But you need to ask him, not me, I cannot uh, help you further with, with this because uh, I was surprised. Last two, James. Just, just finally on, on Romelu, Thomas, will he face any disciplinary action or will you at least be sitting down to discuss these comments with him? We will. We will, and we will do it behind closed doors, and um, and we will do it uh, uh, openly, um, like I think the relation is uh, and has always been. So, um, no further comments in in public on that. No. Just in terms of Lukaku, I, you've you've answered very eloquently there. But is the noise around Lukaku louder because the team's results have not been? not being what you want and that is what happens at a club like Chelsea. Maybe it feels louder but I think it would have been loud anyway with these kind of headlines. You cannot win enough to, to, to not talk about these headlines in media. I mean this is uh, today's world is today's world and everything you say has a certain uh, is, is out there in public if you are like a f uh, such a big player like Romelu and, um, and he's an experienced player and uh, he, he surely knows what 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 kind of uh, value it has when he when he speaks out uh, messages like this i don't think that it would have another impact maybe it's a bit easier to deal with of course like like everything uh, by the way it, everything is easier training is easier uh, uh, press conference is easier uh, um, like like everything is easier when you win um, but this has nothing to do with that. So, so it would have been easier to deal with the noise, yes, but would have been the same noise, I guess. Okay, guys, we have to jump into uh, the, the topic of Lukaku, you know, the big elephant in the room here. He <laughs> says he's not happy at Chelsea. He's not happy with Tuchel's system. Um, this interview, of course, was done early in December, but it was released like 
just before this big game against Liverpool. Um, considering you know the, the circumstance, I think Tuchel answered uh, the Lukaku question quite well. He did sort of minorly defend him in a sense that he said that those headlines could have been taken out of context because of course the interview has not been fully published and it was uh, done with Sky Sports Italy. So they said that there might have been a translation um, problem, mm. you know, in, in, in <laughs> uh, how would you say a lost in translation, yeah, that, yeah. right? Between what it actually means in the native language and uh, what it's been translated <laughs> to in English. And we know the English media love to sensationalize yeah. things. But I mean, from your point of view, maybe Faiz will start with you, you know, mm. going to a big game, was it necessary for this sort of un this noise to come out um, and deter and take away the attention from the game? Not at all, especially yeah. when they are in a title race. Yeah. Um, like Tuchel said and like you said, it is a noise that you should not have invited in the first place, hmm. right? Uh, and it will affect the mood of the whole club. Uh, and Lukaku should have known better. He's 28, he has got what, 400, 500 professional games under his belt. And he should have known better. Maybe uh, Tuchel is defending him by saying that, that it is taken out of context, blown out of proportion. But I don't think uh, that is the case. Nothing is lost um, in between uh, Lukaku and the Italian media. Right. He just, I mean, my theory is he just want to go back to Inter, <laughs> mm -hmm. seeing that Inter is uh, the first in Serie A now and yeah. doing very well in the Inzaghi yeah. uh, in Milan. But... Um, Tuchel is an experienced manager. He has got no problem going head to head with star players. We have seen him uh, battling with Neymar before, and even uh, the, the PSG owner. Even yeah. <laughs> he, he is not afraid. He's a typical uh, German manager, very brave, uh, very outspoken. Although he might have, you know, uh, put a filter here and there, yeah. but you can see he's frustrated with his striker, especially when the other two strikers, Werner and Havertz, is not doing well. Havertz and Werner mm. and Thiago Silva all back in training, but I doubt that they'll start. Uh, whether he wants it or not, he, 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 he should and he could um, use Lukaku again, again, against Liverpool. And it is just uh, so exciting for all of us neutral fans uh, going to this, uh, this match, uh, seeing, seeing uh, how it uh, turns out. Yeah. yeah, Ellie. I mean, it's a bit selfish of Lukaku to be making this kind of statement, kind of mid-season. <laughs> um, do you agree with Faiz's statement then? His intention is to make a move back to uh, Milan, into Milan. I think. I think. That speak the truth. Ellie. These are the words. <laughs> oh, I'm ready to speak the truth. I've been preparing for this segment forever. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, the, these are there are a few words that I uh, you used just now that I like it. You said that you probably some words got lost in translation. Mm. Okay, fine. You know what? Like. Um, we only rely on the translation given by um, the English media and everything else. But then, you heard there are news and gossips and rumours and even posters coming out from the Italian fan base, uh, especially Inter. There's a poster that says that if I were to interpret it in English correctly, because that's how they translated it, I hope that there are no words get lost in this translation again. <laughs> so the, the, po the whole poster says that um, it's, so, it's been um, framed, uh, uh, hung up in in the middle of the city, it says that there are people who run in the rain, there are people who stay in the storms. Goodbye, mm. Romelo. Like, <gasps> like bye, girl, you got no spot anymore in That's Inter. a classic Italian poetry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we were talking about it, like how it's very deep, you know, I, it's like, like apology for my poor translation, but more or less that's how it sounds. Yeah. One. Second, there's this study that I came across and I think it was very interesting and I think I want to share here. So there's this body language expert studying and analysing the whole um, body language of Tuchel and Lukaku in separate interviews. So for Tuchel, it, it's like it was analysed the way he started defending himself when it comes to that particular question. Whenever that particular name was raised up, he, was, he started defending, he started agitating and everything. And it kind of shows the language, the body language ranges around rejection mild anger and impatience, that's one. Now you go to Lukaku, how they analyse his body language in that particular interview and how he was enjoying himself so much. So apparently he inserted such an alpha dominance because the way he sat, like he was surrounded by the trophies that he won right. and he sat like this, talking how happy he was at Inter. And when it comes to that question, um, Lautaro Martinez, yeah. right? He said that, oh, if you could invite your friend to play. And then he was like, oh no, you know what Lautaro, stay there at Inter, don't come to Chelsea. Say that I'll come back mm -hmm. as if 
Chelsea is not worth of the club for Lautaro to play at, to mm. pair up with him. What, what, what does that mean? So there's a lot of things that we could, um, even us as laymen could interpret, right? And then there's this question that um, Faiz mentioned on the table off record just now, before the show. He said that maybe he's not just PR trained. But then, Faiz also mentioned, <laughs> like, given the 400, 500, 600 profe profe professional, professional games, games yeah. that he has played yeah. in his career, Everton, even when he was at Everton, Rim, Faiz, he mm. said something like, he was playing for Everton, yeah? But then he said something to the media, oh, sometimes I wish I was playing at the bigger club. <laughs> Look, there's a better way to say that, hey, in future, maybe, you know, it's time for me to start crafting my path towards a bigger club. Mm. Mm -hmm. That would be a more diplomatic or more better statement to give. But no, he said that. Yeah. So there's like a grey line whether he's just, as you mentioned, maybe Ellie, he's just a straight up forward person. Yeah. Yeah, but like, insert some wisdom somewhere though. Mm -hmm. no, you know. Even, even when he was forcing his way out of Man United, yeah. I remember he was training with his former club, Anderlecht. Oh, while, yeah. while, while waiting, yeah. while waiting uh, to sign for Inter. Yeah, it yeah. is a huge disrespect to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at the time. Exactly. And he, he is used to this kind of controversy. Yeah, yeah. so like, I think his heart really belongs to Inter. I think, I think maybe the intention when he held that interview with Italian media, he wanted to win back the hearts. Yeah, you know what? I know all these games. You want to like play that media pressure. Oh, mm. Lukaku making his way back. And then mm. fans were like, oh, we miss Lukaku. Maybe we should have him back. And then that puts pressure on the management of the club. And then boom. Yeah. But then, and also another thing, when you mention how you've been missing Inter and how you just want to play and go back to Inter. Yep. Are you saying that you're going through that point in your career with Chelsea right now, that it's a regret? Yeah, it seems you, like you it. Right? Yeah. You seem bitter, like you're not happy with how things are. Yep. And why Tuchel couldn't realise this in dressing room when Tuchel uh, mentioned that, I've never sensed this coming from Lukaku. He has always been okay with whatever plans I have. Right. Means Lukaku has been... Yeah, <laughs> you know what? There's a lot of things that we started out there's, in Chelsea. There's room. two sides to this story, yeah, apparently, yeah, yeah. right? Milk in all the advantage, you guys can. <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, as if things couldn't go worse for Chelsea at this point. Mm. I mean, they've not had a great December, yeah. um, as the results have shown. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, uh, results back in December. You know, they've had COVID to deal with. They've had injuries. You know, the Blues have, of course, been a shadow of their former selves since uh, that 4-0 victory over Juventus at home in November. It came. Uh, at the cost of losing key players like Ben Chowell. Um, they've only kept one clean sheet since then and many also will remember that notable defeat against West Ham early December and Tuchel's side have also just managed three wins in eight games and have dropped points against United, Everton, Wolves and most recently in the midweek match versus Brighton. And it doesn't get easier for them, uh, guys, because uh, the January fixtures for Chelsea, um, as we mentioned uh, earlier, they will be facing Spurs three times. And they've got Liverpool coming up this weekend and they've also got Man City. So, how do you deal with all these challenges, plus the Lukaku issue, looking at that fixture list that is? They are feeling the blues indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, three wins out of eight in December is not a title race worthy of a run. Yeah. They have been tremendous in grinding out results mm -hmm. in the beginning of the season. One nil, two ones. Yeah. You know, there, there are a lot of results. That's right seven that. zero. Yeah. They yeah. Have seven yeah, zero yeah, score yeah. too. They're, they're, but uh, the dip in form is so tragic uh, and it's so. Uh, you know, you couldn't see it coming mm. in the first place. Uh, they're not struggling with um, too, too many injuries or whatever. It is just that the team is not doing well on the pitch right mm -hmm. now. And I, I think Tuchel has got uh, something in his capacity to turn, to turn that around. But when there are noises like this, um, especially when it is sparked by your own player, which you bought with a, a huge sum of money in the summer, it is just unfortunate for them. And can you imagine after Lukaku do, uh, you know, giving out those statements, the next day yeah. when they train, what is the mood of the team? You know, yeah. stuff like that will, it will So do always... you think then that, are you going to expect to see him in the starting lineup then against Liverpool? I do. I'm you not, do, not, I'm not, I, 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 I don't believe that um, uh, Tuchel will go on with either Havertz or Werner. Yeah, he, he, is, going, he is going to play, whether, whether we like it or not.
How do you think they're going to solve this problem then? I mean, the window is open this January, so are they looking to bring in reinforcements, Ellie? I have no idea. <laughs> like, after all, after that <laughs> big price tag on yeah. Lukaku, I don't know how they're going to... But, then, but you know what, Chelsea, a rich club, I don't know. I don't know how a rich they're club... Not, they're not works. shy to spend. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also given, like, okay, look. When at the, at the beginning of the season, we talk about the squad death, like how Chelsea, everyone was like, oh my god, Chelsea squad death, like the best team on the paper. Yeah. But then, like how Faiz said, like even with, sure, they have crucial injuries impacting their first 11 players, like Chilwell and Rhys James. Mm. Okay, Chilwell is like definitely out for mm. the season. Mm -hmm. But then also, it doesn't really, the, the, we are talking about the reflection of the gameplay on the pitch. Mm. It, some, there are days it was, Efficient, like wow, young boys stepping up. Wow, mm -hmm. Tuchel playing players out of position and it still mm -hmm. work in mm -hmm. their favor. But then, recently, we're talking about recently, right? Ever since uh, November, December, we started feeling like oh, another draw for Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, even sure, one like another win, but another ugly win, another unconvincing win. So, going to face Liverpool, mm -hmm. are going. Wait, will Salah be playing though? Yes, he yeah. will be playing. So this will be his um, last, last game. two last, last game, last game before game? Fcon. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm. I think I don't know what to call plan. Even though we do not deny his capacity or his competency to mm. to make things work for them, mm -hmm. even in that situation. And yeah. yes, Lukaku will be starting because he wouldn't have any other solid choices. Right. Um, but I just want to talk about their wing back situation because Rhys James and Chilwa are out. Yeah. Who they have? Like Alonso, as, but Alonso, Alonso is not in a good form right now. They have Alonso. And another one, don't forget that, 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 that play on Saul? loan. So? Yeah. <laughs> okay, don't laugh. I almost laugh. forgot about him. Don't laugh. <laughs> oh dear, the fact that I just <laughs> no one thought you know about what? I just wanted to mention that name because I wanted to see Faiz laugh. Right. <laughs> so, like, you know, it's very unfortunate because I think Saul was brought in with the purpose of being a uh, utility player, right? Because he can play in yeah. few positions. But then, that thing backfires because when you are utilised as a utility player, you can't really go all out mm -hmm. in whatever position that you're in. You're going to exactly. be an average Joe like that. And then he's, he has such a hard time struggling mm -hmm. with EPL pay. So I don't know, yeah. how does it if, work with if, if there's a Chelsea player that deserves to speak out to me that it's Saul, not right. Lukaku. Not Lukaku. <laughs> because <laughs> he, came, he came to Chelsea yeah. um, because he is trying to force his way into Luis Enrique's Spanish team for mm -hmm. the World Cup. Mm -hmm. But when you have been played everywhere on the pitch. Minutes. Yep. Yeah, 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 not enough you minutes need, You too. need minutes though yeah. for you to impress your national So I'm not manager. surprised that he's not happy. Mm -hmm. I can see he's coming back to Atleti uh, in January. Yeah. Right. But, uh, you know, I don't think uh, Tuka would want to uh, let him go now. <laughs>